Hello, my name is Mr. Chipman. I'm the biology teacher at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky, and this video is going to take us through the entire class of AP Bio in just 10 minutes. In AP Bio, we go all the way from atoms to ecosystems, and we do that pretty quickly over the course of the year. And there's just a couple of themes. If you really grab a hold of those themes, then you can really grab a hold of the concepts of this class, things like structure and flow and interaction and how all these things sort of work together. This picture here shows the evolution, energetics, information, system interactions as the big ideas of the class and how they all sort of interrelate. Well, we're going to walk through each unit quickly. Here we go, unit one, chemistry of life. This was your introduction to the class. It was a great one. Water, we talked a lot about it. The, the uh, polarity of water is one of the main driving forces behind most of life's systems. The idea that water is uh, polar causes it to interact with hydrogen bonds, causes it to do some interesting things in living systems that, require, that make them be able to do life, right? We talked about the four classes of macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids, these four things are actually um, interact with water. Remember, water causes them to combine together when it's pulled out, dehydration synthesis, and when it's added, hydrolysis. And those reactions are really the basis for uh, creating, breaking down macromolecules, which are the building blocks of life. And one big important thing here that really goes through all, or throughout all of biology, is that the shape of a molecule, the shape of a structure even, determines that structure's function. If you can remember that, that will take you very far. Remember, and if you disrupt that shape some way, somehow, you disrupt its function. This is part two, speaking of structures, there's some cells, and there are a lot of parts to the cells. You've probably had these cell parts on and off since middle school, and so I'm not going to go over each individual cell part. Just understand, again, structure and function being very important to one another. Surface area and volume, the interaction between those also being important. And you can see just by looking at the picture here that someone drew, that increasing surface area is going to increase work area. And if you can do that over a smaller amount of volume, you increase efficiency in the cell. We talked about tonicity as well. We talked about the flow of materials in and out of the cell. We talk about how liquid, how water typically moves from an area of high concentration to low concentration, just like anything else. Well, it's also going to move to an area from an area of low solute, which is a hypotonic, to an area of high solute, which would be hypertonic. Those two words very important in understanding how water moves in living systems. If you remember, it always goes from O to er, hypo to hyper. You'll probably be okay. Right, so think about water movement in that way. Cellular energetics, this is photosynthesis, cellular respiration. This is when the class started to feel, you know, sort of difficult. And, uh, or maybe, maybe it was the other units, I don't know. But for me, this was always the hard thing for me. But I think this picture is a really helpful understanding of that, right? You see how photosynthesis and cellular respiration are really tied together. They're really need one another, right? Uh, photosynthesis has the products that feed into cellular respiration, and the products of cellular respiration feed into photosynthesis. And so you see how these reactions are coupled. There's an input of energy from the sun, and that output of energy is ATP, which fuels living things. Now there's some energy loss. We talked about entropy a little bit as we talked about energy. We also talked about enzymes, how enzymes are able to speed up these reactions by catalyzing them, lowering the activation energy of those reactions. We mentioned a couple like Rabisco and a couple others involved in cellular respiration as well. Um, as you prepare for the exam, just know that when you see things like this, you're typically going to see it in like an experiment or something like that that's odd. But just keep this sort of main idea at the front, and you know what? You're going to be just fine. Unit 4 is a short unit. Cellular communication and cell cycle. Cell communication is a simple concept, right? We talked about signal transduction pathway, the idea that cells receive a signal, that signal is typically called a ligand, and then there's some sort of transduction that happens, meaning that cell, that signal is relayed 
throughout the cell on the membrane or in the actual cytoplasm, and then there's some sort of response that occurs in the cell, a lot of times the response is going to be the creation of a protein. When you see drawings like this, they're going to be odd and convoluted, right? And you know what I'm talking about if you've seen them. And so just make sure you grab a hold of those three ideas, reception, transduction, response, kind of parse them out on the picture, and then that'll help you a lot, right? And then make sure you can follow the arrows and see kind of what's going on. We talked about cell cycle in this unit as well. A lot of review in the cell cycle. Um, as long as you understand interphase, uh, main idea behind the interphase is the primary life cycle of the cell. 90% of the cell's life takes place in the interphase. It's when DNA is synthesized, mitosis being a very small portion of the cell's life cycle, but that is the division of the nucleus. And then cytokinesis is where the cell is actually split into two. Mitosis, or this process of the cell cycle, creates two new daughter cells that are identical to one another, which is different than meiosis, which we talked about in chapter five. In chapter five, we dealt with the concept of heredity. We dealt with meiosis, which is the formation of gametes. What makes meiosis particularly difficult is there's t or different is that there's two divisions, meiosis one, meiosis two. And we, in, at least in my class, really only focused on three of those phases. We focused on prophase one, which is where tetrads form and crossing over occurs. We focused on anaphase one, which is where uh, homologous pairs separate and those homologous pairs separating is what causes something like independent assortment, right? Uh, the idea that the traits will separate themselves independently of one another so that little a and big B can go together, right? Um, and then we talked about in anaphase two, sister chromatids separate, and this is the concept of segregation, how those alleles independently separate from one another and have an equal chance of being inherited. And so, uh, unit five was a difficult one for us. I don't know about for you. Uh, a couple concepts in, in unit five that made it difficult were the concept of linked genes, which kind of go outside of the norm of um, normal Mendelian sort of probabilities. And so I encourage you, if you want a more detailed description of something like linked genes or really any difficult concept as you review uh, for the exam. I have made comprehensive videos for each unit and encourage you to check those out or you can, if it's a particular section, I've made videos for each one of those as well. Encourage you to look at those. Unit six, here we go. Gene expression, gene regulation. Really, if you remember this little picture, you're going to be good. Um, DNA is the code for all proteins. In order to get to a protein though, you have to make an RNA first. That's called transcription. And from RNA to protein, that's called translation. Translation happens on the ribosome. Transcription, transcription happens in the nucleus. DNA also replicates itself, of course. And remember, that was a pretty difficult concept because you have the two directions and the replication fork and all that stuff. But it's not too bad. It's a big idea. A lot of times when students will miss the forest for the trees, so to speak, and they'll kind of make up this mutt sort of uh, process like transcriptulation or something, right? And so uh, make sure that you separate those, understand the difference between them. I think this picture is perfect. Here you see uh, reverse transcription. We talked about retroviruses, how they are RNA viruses that get into a cell. The cell um, reverse transcribes that into RNA, then this goes through transcription, translation, makes proteins. And so that's, you know, there's a couple of concepts there. Mutations, change in the DNA and a change in the DNA results in a change in the protein, which in re results in a change of function, right? We talked about that at length. Unit seven, great picture, <laughs> by the way. It's like one of those pictures, you know, in the doctor's office, they have the little children's books, and you read it, and there's like a giraffe eating trees, and um, yeah, I mean, this picture pretty much sums up unit seven, right? Uh, the ones with short necks couldn't eat, and they were really hungry. And uh, then you see that the one on the short neck was just kind of a leathery uh, fossil over there on the right. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, natural selection is driven by death, right? It's driven by the fact that not everybody lives. Uh, the ones that are less fit die. The ones that are more fit live. Those more fit genes pass on to the next generation. The concept of fitness is not just survival, but also reproduction. Giraffes' necks get longer over time. Why? Because the ones with long necks can reach the leaves not because they wanted to. I'm sure that little giraffe that's over there on the right side wanted to live, but it couldn't. We talked about some things that kind of go against this, random changes 
uh, that can occur, things like um, genetic drift. We talked about Hardy Weinberg, which again is sort of its own little video. So if you have questions about that, I have several videos of me just working Hardy Weinberg problems. Check those out. Unit 8. Man, I love this picture summing up all of Unit 8 because you've got your, on the left, you've got producers, you know, the trees and the deer eating the trees and the wolves eating the deer and everything's in perfect balance, right? Those are those trophic levels, producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers. And what happens if you take the wolves out? Well, the deer, po the deer overpopulate, eat all the trees. There's mass chaos, right? And so the deer would, the wolves would represent a keystone species here, kind of keeping everything in balance and in order. There's a lot of ways you can disrupt the balance in order. Invasive species, climate change. We talked about several of those sorts of things. And unit eight's not that difficult. Guess what? That's all of AP Bio in I don't know how long it took, probably less than 10 minutes. Hope this was helpful for you. Good luck on the exam that's coming up in just a few weeks.